Hello everybody, my name is Isaiah, and in this video we're going to talk about how to overclock a GTX 1070. Alright, so I have a GTX 1070 G1 Gaming Edition here, some Gigabyte. In a previous video, I installed a water block on it and put it in my computer. So let's go ahead and see how far I can overclock this video card. All right, so here I am on my desktop uh, recording this. Now, it's not gonna be as smooth uh, recording this while overclocking, especially trying to do a benchmark, but I'll give it a shot. So, as you see here, I have CPU-Z on my screen here to confirm what type of memory I have. That's very important because if you have Samsung memory, you're gonna be able to overclock much further than Micron memory. Uh, of course, the next thing you want to hear is the sensors, and it tells you real-time what your speed is. Now, of course, in your software like Afterburner here, you can actually scroll through and see real-time, but I found that to be more cumbersome than actually just having a separate program doing that for me. Now, take note, you'll see the options are different. Here, you see the memory is listed at 2,000 megahertz whereas in Afterburner it says 4,000. Now this is just a different way of reading the software. Technically memory is double data rate, so 4,000 double that is 8,000 megahertz, which is actually what it's running at. And here, for some reason, it's dividing it by four, giving us the 2,000 number. So just keep in mind when you're running different software to realize what each one's doing, just so you don't get confused and input the wrong numbers. So the first thing you want to do is raise your power limit and your temperature limit. Now in Afterburner they're kind of linked together, you can unlink it, but there's no real reason not to have both of them on max. Now if you have the option to raise your core voltage, mine does not, mine's locked out. Basically you still can't surpass 1.093 volts. So whether you can ex extend it up to that point or stuck at the default settings either way you're going to still have a limitation on your overclocking so once that's set hit apply and you'll see nothing really changes you may actually see a small boost in your base clock that's because you have raised the power limit and temperature limit so if you're in a hot room or your case is not have, doesn't have great airflow this can affect uh, your performance now you see here on the right side my video card is running at 41 Celsius. That's just because it's water cooled. Um, you don't see the fan speed because there is no fans on it. So the next step is you want to see how far your memory goes. So you want to raise the memory clock um, in increments. I suggest starting at 100 and moving your way up. So if you input 100, you like what it looks like, you hit apply, and you'll see your memory speed jumps. Now I wouldn't believe what it says in actual the benchmark here is the numbers don't change. In the past they change, sometimes they don't change depending on what version you have. And that's not important. So 100 is stable for me and I suggest just keep going up so I know this card goes a lot higher so let's go to 400. And I press it again. This should make me stable. And I suggest running this longer. So in the, in this video, I'm just doing a quick version of this, but when I first did this, I let it run 15 minutes while I was doing other things. I up something, watch some YouTube or some of that, make sure that it's running, make sure there's no ad artifacts on your screen, and you move on from there. So just keep on going up. So once you hit a number where you say it's going to crash or everything starts looking really fuzzy on the screen, like funky where some objects disappear and come back or they're pink or whatever colors they are that's not normally there what you want to do is back it off a little bit write that number down and move on so I know that if I put my memory to 50510 pretty much either it's going to crash or it's going to give me some artifacts now when I did this before it's because I ran it for a really long time I was already going an hour in so the car was warm, it was already affected by the performance of using it. So I don't actually see any artifacts right now, but take my word for it, that was my limit. 
So let's set this back to zero once you find your number. Next step you want to do is move on to the core clock. Now you're not going to get as high. So the way this works is when it says zero on the screen right here, it's going off your base clock. So my video card base clock is saying 1987. And that, so if I add any numbers to that, that's what's going to boost it by. So if I add 25, it should put me just over, well, just under 2,000. And so some cards you'll see will have a higher number, and that's just based on what NVIDIA thinks your card is best at, based on Boost 3.0. Earlier in the year, I was able to actually start at 2,000, and 25 put me to 2025. So it really depends on, like I said, software, brand, of card, and everything like that. So this is the same deal. What you want to do is slowly boost it up. So 25 is good. Let's try 30. And this is, like I said, less forgiving. You'll find it. It literally you will just crash. You won't have a glitchy screen. Most likely, you might get a few weird frames, and then it crashes. What you do is you just back it up afterwards. So I know for sure after doing this before, that my card does not like anything above 90. So I can set it to 90, this should be 2075, like I see right there. And this speed is pretty much stable. I don't expect it to crash at all, pretty much ever. I ran game benchmarks, I ran this benchmark, and I know from my experience, this is pretty much my set point. Now you can go higher than this, and it's kind of weird. So if I punch in, say 110, you'll see the number might not change. Oh, they did change a little bit, but you'll see sometimes it doesn't reflect how much you upped it. And that's because it's based on power limit. So if you are drawing too much power based on what Boost 3.0 thinks, or if you have a voltage limit like I do, actually everybody does, then you won't be able to pass a number. So if 110 works. Let's go to 115. If I do that, it boosts it up. So I'm going to actually back it off because I know for sure it's going to crash and I want to make a video. But pretty much if you keep going at some point you're going to crash then you want to back it off slightly see what that number is and then you raise it back up until you hit a hard number and you kind of want to play back and forth. So the final step here is once you actually have all that is you want to set both those numbers in. So Say if I did 115 and plus 510. Oops, it didn't have to hit okay for both of them, I think. But let's see here. So if I actually hit okay here, I'm most likely gonna get a crash, so I'm not gonna do it. But those are kind of my top numbers, going a little bit above what my video card is capable of by itself for each setting. So what I wanna do is back it off slightly and see what happens. I know that this actually is just fine. So if you do 495 and hit OK, oops. Oh, I'm surprised that stuck it. Let's go 90, 85. 85 is safe for this video. I want to make a video. And 510 is not a good number, so let's go 8. As you see, this is kind of playing. Luckily, I just started this benchmark. My card's kind of still cool. It's not um, bent out of shape from being up and down, up and down the whole time. And it's great for us because we can make a video. Otherwise, this video would have been over already. So like I said before, you want to play around, make sure you get good settings, and then you want to go back and actually benchmark it with your favorite game, Tra play your favorite game, benchmark your favorite game, see if there's any glitches in that. And if there's not, then that's probably a good number. Now you'll see, like I said, this number up here, your boost clock, will go up and down based on your total power requirements if they're used, total temperature, and total voltage. So you may be able to go 2100, but then in certain games that take more energy, that's the best way to put it, more energy, uh, then it'll downclock itself. And it'll downclock itself all the way to the base number if it ex exceeds what it's meant to be, if that makes sense. So anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this very, very quick tutorial on how to overclock your GTX 1070. Now, the written version is actually more in detail than this. 
is definitely in the link below. And of course, if you're watching this video from that page, definitely read through it. It'll make a lot more sense than just kind of me saying, here's your max voltage, here's your low voltage. But this kind of gives you an idea of how I overclock my video card and how I uh, reflect on it and make sure that my settings look fine and how they reflect back to me. So anyways, thank you. As always, thanks for watching.